Okay, so um, if you want to have a look at the, today's session, I'm also uh, recording this uh, through Zoom. I mean, in the future, we're going to uh, stream it out in the uh, Zoom platform as well. So after the session, I will upload the um, recorded session online so you can remind your colleague and uh, friends to uh, have a look at that. Uh, we will um, ask uh, <clears throat> people to um, alter, we, we will alter our assessment uh, method as well. So uh, we will email everybody about uh, detail of assessment. So there will be all online submission rather than face-to-face -face presentation. Okay. So certainly we will be available online to help you uh, over those sessions. Okay. So let's have a look at today's uh, session first. So today we're going to, uh, again, uh, doing advanced theater design. And we actually uh, apply the theater to remove noise of a piece of audio as a task. So last session, we actually did uh, some sort of uh, theater in with the noise, so we shape the noise with band-limited noise, okay? So today we're going to look at how we design theater and what are tools available. So first of all, let's brief go through this uh, um, tutorial sheets, and then later I'm going to demonstrate with my MATLAB, all right? So first of all, in this, so first of all, we need to introduce a concept called um, theater specification. So these are the theater you like, all right? So all the idea engineers should understand uh, theater specifications. Not necessary, the programmer or DSP coder needs to understand or, um, but uh, for end user. So those are the, for the, the parameter end user can input. So everybody should be in the area, try to use that, should understand. For example, uh, sampling frequency, pass band, edge frequency, stop band edge frequency, pass band ripple. This is called desired pass band ripple. I think the um, sentence is not very good because it's basically a limitation. So you have to limit the pass band ripple up to three dB. Stop band attenuation, 20 BD, dB. Okay, so we can look at the diagram, uh, which is slightly uh, more clear for you to understand those parameters. So what we basically this lecture slide asks you to do is to um, using SP2 to design it, uh, a graphical user interface. Okay, so we can now uh, have a look at this design specification, how that convert into um, a MATLAB uh, field design toolbox parameters. Okay, so we're going to start uh, SP2 as normal. So first of all, let's uh, have a look at this screen here. So if you go to your MATLAB, I hope you already open your MATLAB on your machine. By the way, if you are uh, working from home, yeah, you need a MATLAB, you can download MATLAB before 30 day trail version if you haven't uh, got it. So, or you can download it just before, one month before your submission, try to get your submission. Okay. So let's go to the common window. So if you type SP2. So you should get a single processing toolbox. You should get this window. In this window, we have theater here. So we start a new theater. On the second column, click new theater. And then you should have this theater design window appear. Okay, so in this case, what we have in the um, lecture slides here is going to ask you to design a FIR theater with specific theater parameters. So these screenshots on the lab sheets already demonstrated, I put inputted all this fret parameter there already. All right, so you can say low pass, FIR equal rip, um, 
we normally ignore this column because this column is automatically minimize the field order. And the field frequency specification is the main thing we need to uh, concentrate on. So here we got sampling frequency, F pass, F stop. So the pass band corner and the stop band corner. Pass band tolerance, which is three dB uh, distortion allowed. Stop band attenuation, 20 dB attenuation of this field. So go back to MATLAB, this window here, exactly. You know, this is actual interactive window. We can put our parameter here. So first column, that's all okay. Second column, minimum order. Third column, frequency specification. Here, we try to use the parameter we put in the lab sheets. So 10 kHz sampling frequency and uh, what is the other parameter? Let me have a look. Five and eight, yeah, 500 and 800. So let's do that. So we go 500, 800. And then we have pass band report, 3 dB. Stop band attenuation, 20 dB, yeah? So that's exactly what happens in the lab sheets. We are copy paste really into the theater, all right? So now what we're going to do is to, after you press this parameter, you click design theater. So after the algorithm is going to run for a while. And eventually it should give you a theater designed. Okay, I take quite a long while for my theater to get it. Okay, so now you can see the shape of this low pass filter, all right? So you, it's not very kind of a steep because this filter is not in big order. It's 19 order filter has been designed. So this filter, if you look at the uh, title here, is called filter designer bracket FLT1. So that basically means this filter name is filter one. I mean, indeed, in, in the MATLAB, it will use this name as a variable, variable, variable name in the memory. So now actually, I mean, there are other um, very lot, lots of uh, um, icons you can click, which is showing the different characteristic of this theater. Um, I don't think we're going to talk too much today because uh, we're in the future session, we will talk about the theater um, specification. But you, if you want to try, you can, there's no harm to, uh, click through that. For example, at the moment, it shows this field as a magnitude response. You can also click this field specification, which is the original, uh, where you, how you define it. And this is a field, field um, magnitude response, which is how um, the amplitude energy varying against the frequency, isn't it? So basically you have uh, like a, um, zero hertz, they all pass through without attenuation, but the one K hertz is this point about attenuated uh, 20 dB, something like that. And also you have some other uh, parameters that such as phase response. So this is how phase changes over different frequency, the phase delay of each frequency components, uh, which is in radians. And you have uh, magnitude response and phase response in one diagram. And then this is uh, a group delay. So the theater will cause, a, in, in kind of a physical meaning, it will cause the signal delay about uh, uh, 9.5 sample, 9.5 samples. So actually digital theater does cause the signal delay. So when you actually apply your theater, when you're doing music mixing stuff, you understand you will cause a delay. If you have a mixing channel, one channel goes through theater, one channel didn't, okay? Doesn't. And there's a phase delay, impulse response, and so on. All right, so I'm not going to go through too much detail. And then finally, in this bracket here, on this bracket BA, this icon, we're showing all this magic number. So those are the, well, I, well, I, I call this magic number because those number actually does this low pass filtering. When you convolve with a group of this number, 
with audio samples. That's how theater works. Um, okay, so, but how to design this, we're going to uh, leave it to later. So we concentrate on engineering approach. Once we design, imagine we have the package. Everybody will have theater design package nowadays. And then how can we use it in the coding? Now we've done it, actually. So we can close that and it will become uh, one of this uh, uh, parameter within MATLAB. So we have local MATLAB window. Uh, sorry, no, haven't yet. We need to export it. So the next step, let's go back to the uh, lab sheet. I think, it, I believe is export. Okay, so export field structure into MATLAB workspace. You probably did this in last week, but we haven't uh, go through it. So today I'm going to uh, very much focus on what is theater in terms of uh, programming. So there are some equations, but don't be scared. Those equations uh, is hard to understand, but easy to uh, use in reality in the programming. Okay, we will also go through these uh, equations, uh, a mathematic formula in the future lectures. All right, so if you certainly it might be streaming lecture, but you can listen to and watch. Okay, so first of all, what is this theater structure and what does that link to the theater we design? Okay, so this is another first question. So the digital theater normally representing as a Z transform function. So this is a Z transform function. What is Z transform function? It doesn't matter now because we're going to talk about it in the future. So what we think is Z is just variable like X and Y, you know, so those are pol uh, polynomial in terms of the, uh, there's a, the, the Z transfer function is expressed as kind of a, uh, a group of expression uh, divided by another group of expression. So we call this a polynomials, yeah? So if you uh, know math a little bit, you can understand what I'm talking about, maybe. So, okay, so basically, it says b1 plus b to z power minus one plus and dot dot plus b bracket m plus one z power minus m. So basically, what it basically means is z is a variable, it's to do with frequency, but we leave it a moment. But the b1, b2, and so on, those are the coefficient. Those are the coefficient multiply by the, uh, this variable, okay? So this b1, b, we, we normally call uh, these are numerator coefficients, okay? The, in DSP convention, we normally using uh, a B, variable B to store all the numerator parameters or coefficients. Similarly, we also have an uh, equation on the, on the uh, denominator, on the, on the bottom of fraction, which uh, looks like, like A1 plus A2 uh, z power minus one plus 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 until a n minus one multiplied by z power minus n. So this is a coefficient uh, expression of denominator of theater. So the most important again z is a variable, and it will uh, start from uh, a minus one power until minus n power. However, the most important is the coefficient a one a two. So they basically this represent an array, a bunch of number. Uh, we give a name of the number A, of those numbers, uh, a variable name A, and the first element we call A1, second element A2, and so on. So B, A are two bunch of number. Each stores the coefficients of the denominator and the numerator um, terms, respectively. So in this case, when we design the theater, when we design theater, this is very important. When we design the theater, what, we, what we're actually talking about is design those coefficients, all right? Because that is variable, okay? So we don't worry about the equation. If you don't understand equation, forget it. When we design variable, all we need to get is the number, a bunch of number represent B1, B2, and Bn, and a bunch of number represent A1, A2, until n, n minus one. So using M and N basically means an arbitrary, all right? So it can be loads of A's, loads of B's, or can be just one cup of A, cup of B. So the M and N are representing the order of theater. Okay, so 19 basically means the maximum 
between M and N is 19. So either you have 19 Bs or neither you have 19 A. Basically, that's why the order is 19. It's not going to over, so the item is not going to more than 19 fiat order here. Okay, so what I'm talking about here is say, literally, when we design the theater, we are designing those, we are trying to get those magical coefficients, magical number. So if I go back to MATLAB, so what I try, really mean is this is a theater designer now, okay? So you can, again, uh, still view that theater design. You just, we just designed. So actually, if you look at this B and A here, now you understand why this bracket B A displayed here because B and A means the coefficients of the theaters. So you can see now those are the group, you can say numerator or this number represent. For example, this may be represented B is B1, B2, B3, B4. So all this coefficient we already obtain. So the field design toolbox help us is to obtain those coefficients. All right. So now we can we get a B and A. Well, where people ask where is a, where is the denominator? All right. So there's another very important uh, feature. I think I uh, also wrote in the tutorial sheet somewhere. This is a FIR theater. A FIR theater. FIR theater. The only have number of numerator. Well, can't say that because you have to divide by something. It's only divided by one. So the denominator coefficients in terms of this equation, A is always equal to one. And that is always just one term. So it's very, very simple. So in case of FR theater, you only have the uh, numerator coefficients and the denominator just as number one. We can actually have a look at that in MATLAB, investigate that. So the next step is say, let's investigate this theater in MATLAB memory uh, space. So what we do now is to click this field one and click export to workspace. Let's go back to MATLAB, do this operation, okay? So click here, uh, file export. So certainly, so that you need to click file export, to export your theater you will get something like this window, All right? So you got uh, a couple of highlighted, but we don't want that, we don't want that. We only want this highlighted, so I only want this field. So those are the variables generated within the theater design toolbox, SP2, but we only need a theater one at the moment, okay? So we then click export to workspace the window should automatically close after you click that. And then when we go back to, uh, well, I don't close this. When we go back to the MATLAB uh, main window, you will actually say this variable here, field one, which is exported in uh, space. Okay, so this is a special variable. It says, in the value, it says structure. That means it's not like a, a integer or value or stuff like that. So I hope everybody gets that. Okay, so then what we're going to investigate is to look at this field one. So F I L T field one in MATLAB. So you can see they actually print a group of sub variable of that because this is a a structure, all right, a sub variable. So within this sub variable, as we said, the TF represents the formula. Other things is like a FS sampling frequency and stuff like that, the label, which is the name of this theater. So we can actually access this transfer function. So we, what we do here is F field one, field one dot TF, which is the transfer function. So now you can say, if you type flt, uh, filt1.tf in MATLAB screen, what you get, it, it also display another uh, sub variable, which is num and a dumb. Yeah, num representing numerator coefficients, 20 
and then represent the denominator. As I said, FIR denominator is always one. All right, so now we can further access that by type FILT1.TF.NUM. By doing that, you actually can see all this magical number display on the screen. That's actually, I mean, although it only display four decimal points, uh, but it's actually same as uh, the number here. It just didn't display on the screen. So when we talk about the field design, we actually try to obtain this. Let's quick review, yeah. And when we design it in the nowadays, rarely people design by hand because field design is a very complicated uh, algorithm. So the design using software package such as using MATLAB SP2. And then you just input what you want in terms of low pass, high pass, band pass, and parameter. And you export your field coefficients to your software. And then your software can use that coefficient to do the filtering process. OK, so let's have a look how we're going to do it in a uh, uh, filtering process uh, in a minute. So, OK, so I'm going to help my student here. In a minute, then I'm going to uh, talk about that late, slightly later. Okay, so I see uh, some of the some of my colleagues in the classroom already done this part. So, okay, now let's continue this journey of uh, the whole engineering journey of from design theater from the user specification to implement that theater and actually does something on the signal, okay? So the next section here uh, is to um, give you the skeleton code, which actually, it should work, all right? It should work with, with kind of uh, the code you already done now, because we, what, 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 what normally we do is we start with copy paste, okay? Then we, we, we try to explain what happens here, okay? So in page four, you have this couple of lines code, so we can copy paste that into a MATLAB main edit window. Okay, let's go back to MATLAB. Uh, let's go to the edit window and paste it here. Okay, so good. So, and then let's maybe you want to just look at the result first. So it will be interesting. So we Click editor, run, certainly you need to give the name of this code. So uh, what I'm going to say is, um, yeah, this is my folder here. Okay, so let's just call it um, lab seven, test, save and it's run. Okay, what should happen after you click run is basically um, you will generate a two figures yeah where's my first figure uh, are they not here maybe my code is not complete figure one figure two okay let's try again click run Oh yeah, I, got, I actually got two figures. So uh, after this, you should uh, get two figures. So the first figure is a random noise we generate. The second figure is we apply a low pass filter we designed and apply the filter to the random noise and filter the version. So if you filter, continue filter a noise uh, signal with low, top, low pass filter, you actually get some sort of sine wave tunnel voice. And it's very interesting effects. If you have time, you can try that. I mean, you can have a loop filter again and again. So what it basically does here is you have noise signal on the left of figure one, and you get a result on figure two. It's less noisy, <laughs> less noisy. You can say the signal is more smooth because it's low pass filter. As I said, lots of shocking noise sparks are really representing high frequency. Okay, so um, let's have a look here. All right, so, so what we have here is, um, the code here, we explain here, the code here. So the first line of code is basically generate random noise with 200 signal.
I mean, because I want to display on the screen nicely, so I just using a little bit uh, a shorter signal. 200 uh, point, you can't really hear much, isn't it? But uh, it will plot nicely. If you have a bunch of noise signal about one second, it will just say a block of blue in the screen. You can't, you know, you have to zoom in to see the structure. Okay, the key thing here is this three line, all right? I highlighted this three line. So those three lines are key thing uh, of this field design. So field B equal to, so first of all, which I did is very simply because we have already, so to run this code, the precondition is to you already have the variable theater one within the workspace. So basically that means your field has been designed and been exported into a memory. So to be able to access the memory, you'll be able to say b equal to field one dot tf dot non, exactly what we did in the common window just before. To access this a group of magic number of theater and assign those numbers in a variable called b. And then we do similar thing, we assign the denominator, which actually just the number one into a. So now after that, we will say the answer here in the workspace, the variable a store a value one. That's why denominator is always uh, one of FIR theater. And the numerator b is 20 uh, numbers. Okay, because we have 19 order, all right? I think the number of coefficient is one, uh, oh, one uh, sorry, one number uh, over the uh, order number. So if, for example, the order number is 19, the, the actual coefficient number is 20 because uh, uh, you have a, a, a one constant without multiply by z power something. Anyway, so this is uh, the factor. All right, so, and then the line four is the actual filtering process. You have a B, A, X. So filter is a MATLAB building function does the filtering process for you. So all you need to do to feed into this function is to give the coefficients B and A, as I just said in theory here, in theory, if you know B and know A, if you know B's or A's, then you know the filter. So all you need to do is give B and A into a filter function, into the filter function, and also certainly you don't want to uh, forget uh, the input signal X. So you will give the output signal Y. So that's how easy it is. So you, all you need to do is give filter B A, the filter give filter out Y. All right, so let's look at back to the code. So what we did here is because X is random signal, so we say Y equal to theater B A X. So this random signal going to be filtered and the result going to be in Y. All right, so here is basically, I just plot an X Y, all right? Don't worry about this uh, other, the just decoration of the plot. So the result of the final one is just, I create two figure because I don't want to overwrite a figure, so I can have two figures, and each plot X and, and the second one plot Y. So first one we plot signal X, second one we plot signal Y. So if that's the result we have. So this is signal X. Certainly I can use subplot to do some comparison, but that's not uh, important in this session. Okay, so we're down the filtering process. That's how it works. Okay, so people may ask me, there is a problem of this code, all right, in the engineering uh, uh, kind of approach. So, I mean, you can either, so with this approach, what do you do is you, uh, for example, if you are um, programming uh, in other software, you want to uh, design a theater in uh, your app or in a computer, uh, whatever, a desktop system, what you need to do is you want to already have a method app to design the theater, and then you have somewhere memory or uh, a disk memory, you save this parameter, your uh, coefficients already there, so you can use it. But the problem is, if we don't have the filter perceived somewhere, for example, if I say, say 
or the screen clear or the memory. If I run the code now, it will have some problem. It will give you the error message because it doesn't know what is filter TF num. Because when I clear the memory, the original exported filter is gone. So I have to re-export from SP2, which is troublesome. All right. So some people think maybe we can actually design the filter within the code rather than call out a, a graphic user interface that MATLAB can do. Actually, this is a, a very uh, unique, not unique. You can certainly design this in Python or whatever, but MATLAB is very good at that. So if you design in Python or other programming languages, it will be very difficult or it will take a lot of computational time or effort to make it. But in MATLAB also it provides something. So we, uh, let's try MATLAB away, but then we can look at other parts. So actually the, uh, all the single tour books, okay. So all this uh, in nice user interface we have used in SP2, you know, theater design, like a new, new theater. We look at this, this is all actually in the background coding some functions. So those functions can be used in your coding. So the main function it calling from uh, is this called F design and design function. F design is filter design and uh, uh, design is actual design function. So there are loads of F design is huge uh, a function uh, suites. So it have loads of other sub functions and uh, uh, other functions associated with that. We're not going into much detail today. So what I'm going to do is to have a very simple uh, F design example to implement a roughly similar uh, idea of today's uh, uh, lab. And we do that same thing. Uh, and, and we have a look how to do that. Okay, so let's introduce a bit of F design. So F design is a function you can design the theater within the code. All right, I don't think people probably wouldn't like it, but that's but also it's convenience. You don't need to use graphic user interface. Okay, so um, let's have a look uh, here first. Okay, so F design, as I said, is a group function, is an umbrella function. So it can design different theater, low pass, high pass, something. So here is say, the first step is understand f design dot response. F design dot response is uh, specified by MATLAB user menu, so you can design different type of theater. So what we try to achieve exactly what today does is f design dot low pass. So f design dot low pass is going to be uh, used for this. Okay, so if you go back to let's have a look at the uh, go back to the filter specification we did graphically. So we give a filter specification a couple of parameter, uh, sampling frequency, F pass, uh, pass band kernel uh, edge frequency, stop band edge frequency, A pass, which is a, a, a toleration of noise, a toleration of attenu uh, distortion within the pass band, and uh, A stop, which is um, the um, attenuation at stop band. So this four parameter needs to be uh, put into this uh, design function. So let's have a look here. Okay, so to design the theater, we need to actually using uh, this format. Okay, so we first of all design a theater using F design low pass. Then in the bracket, which F design accept user interface, we will have uh, uh, four parameters. This four parameter is being uh, specified as FP, FST, AP, AST. So FP is a pass band corner frequency. FST is a stop band corner frequency. AP is your pass band uh, error allowance. AST is your attenuation. attenuation. And then you give the number here to represent those numbers. So FP 0 0.15, 0 0.25, pass band ripple 1 dB, stop band attenuation 6 dB. Uh, this example certainly is different uh, values of the my uh, specification we did previously. 
but we need to understand why, what is this happens here. So only the most important of using that is the corner frequency has been, has been normalized. Okay, so what is normalization? Let's have a look here. So if you're going to use a, a design, F design, um, MATLAB would like to, all the mathematician would like to implement this algorithm uh, without specify uh, a sampling frequency. Or it can be, so, what we should say, is sampling frequency uh, independent? Because different system would have different sampling frequency. The field of design should work for all the sampling frequencies. So we need to normalize against the sampling frequency. So the field of design tool normally accept uh, the parameter in a normalized frequency way. Mm, it could be normalized because all the digital system has this liquid uh, Nyquist uh, limit, isn't it? So the digital system can only express the frequency up to half sampling frequency. That's upper limit of any uh, digital uh, sampling system. So if we're using half sampling frequency as denominator and the desired frequency in the numerator, you will always get a number less than one because the maximum frequency presenting within the system is half sampling frequency. So this line is important. So this is te tell you how to calculate normalized frequency. Okay, so in, with that example, we then have a second code. Let's do the second code here. So this second code is actually design the filter and uh, look at the filter into uh, a graphic in user interface. So with the graphic user interface is just to look at the filter, but not no longer use participate the design filter. Okay, I'm going to go through this uh, code in a minute. So let's, let's first copy paste that into MATLAB and run the code first. If I go to uh, copy paste this uh, filter, which, is, which page is this? This is, uh, page seven, yeah. Page seven, we have this example. So we have new code. Well, then later on, you're going to, you can help uh, this by putting these two code together. At the moment, we just run uh, separate. So I'm going to, again, run this code. I save it all for lab, uh, lab seven, test two, something like that. It doesn't matter, you, any name you can use. All right, now, after run the code, it will pop up this window, all right? Directly a filter, looks like a low pass filter window. Okay, so let's uh, uh, minimize that for a while. So to look at what the happens to this code. So first of all, we say fs equal to sampling frequency. Then we find out the normalized passband frequency by using the desired 500, which is my passband edge frequency, divided by half sampling frequency. And so actually this will going to become fp equal to 0 0.1. All right, so normalized, so the result. But we don't need to put the result of ourselves. MATLAB is going to calculate by, for us. FST equal to 800, which is stop band frequency divided by half sampling frequency, normalized as 0 0.16, and exactly the same uh, pass band ripple three, stop band ripple 20. And then you say filter specification equal to F design, and put all the parameter here. Instead of number, now you can put FP here, FST, A pass, A stop, which all up which all are assigned number. And then this line eight is very important. It does actually design the theater. Theater two is equal to design field spec. And field two is designed as a structure. Actually, this is a object. So it's a different as a slightly different as structure. I, I don't know. Why I can't get this window into? Okay, this is the theater after design. So it's it's slightly more complicated than the structure, but it also it has contains numerator, 
and the denominator as well because it's FIR, so it actually didn't show denominator in this of new object type of filter. All right, so the filter function also can use that to filter the signal. So next, what I'm going to do is then the final one, FV tool, is to visualize this filter. So uh, next step is what I'm going to do is to combine this together to run the code from scratch without any problem. Okay, then we can ask you to do the task by yourself. Okay, so now we got theater design. So how can I combine them together? So we can copy paste this two pieces of code together. All right, so if I copy paste two pieces of code together, what we can do is uh, for this code, uh, we have X signal, uh, and then I don't need to, the Y going to put it towards the end. Okay, so I'm going to move this, uh, because the filter one is, the, this filter is gone. There's no longer have a, a B and A. So it comments out of that. We can comment out of this. Okay, so what we do is now we can filter the X signal using the filter designed within MATLAB. Okay, so we can actually use this line here, say Y equal to filter, but in now this case, instead of using B and A, you're using the filter designed filter, which is called filter two. So we can use fit two x. Hopefully it works. And now we can say, in this case, let's have a look if we can clear all the screen and clear all the variables. So say if we can run the code without any add of graphic user interface. All right, so we now get to the result. So we got input signal, op signal, and a filter diagram. And then everything is run within the MATLAB code without any need of our external code assistant. Okay, after this session, uh, after this recording, I'm also going to upload this, uh, the final test code online so you can reference to. Okay, so at the moment, I'm just explaining what we do is we, we can get a random signal generated, and now we don't need a, a graphic user interface because we'll be able to use the field design toolbox in command line interface in coding style, and then we can filter the signal with our coding and we can plot the results. Okay, finally, so this lesson's task is to actually apply the technique we have learned into a real signal. So this signal, it can be downloaded from website. So I'm going to quickly uh, demo what happens here. Okay, so if you download, uh, um, there's a signal called a signal with noise, actually audio signal. With back, background noise, okay? So, and there's noise profile, which just this noise. Okay, so what you can do, is, what we ask you to do is, because now we've done the FFT, DFT, signal processing spectrum look at. So you can look at the signal with noise and look at the noise spectrum to figure out a filter design specification. So what filter you want. And using the example code I just finally produced to design the theater, so we have this noise process, automated process. So get the noise signal in, uh, apply the theater, spit out the clean signal. Okay, so that's kind of a script to do this process. You know, it is very important, you know, I, I certainly, the real application is much more complicated than that, like a BBC, a library or I think archive library, they used to have a project called Music Restoration. They have old vinyl with loads of his noise, they digitize it, they have to batch process. So you don't want a human to every time just, you, you actually look at the recording with specific noise, you design some theater, 
probably much more intelligent than this, but this basic idea, then doing like a bunch of uh, thousand tracks in one go with automatic script. So that's basically provided this, lay the foundation of that. All right, so I think I finished the talk about today's session. Everything should be online uh, later. I'm going to upload, I don't know, Moodle later or even YouTube in the future so you can access outside. Uh, and then you can uh, work on your task now. So I'm going to help other students. Thank you very much. Okay, this code will be uploaded. So I'm going to stop recording.